So our creative prompt for today is a color mixing prompt. What I'd like you to do in your warm-ups today is play with complementary colors and learn to see the colors that are created when you two complement complementary colors or near complementary colors are combined. We're going to start with a Nicolazo yellow. And you can see Nicolazo yellow is a really swooshy color. It has a nice push to it. And we're going to add to that this manganese violet. It's a little bit tricky when you're working with complements or near complements because it's really hard to get exact complements unless you're really working with your color wheel. And personally, I don't feel the need to do that because what I want to see is not just how two perfect complements mix, but I wanna see what happens when colors that aren't perfectly complementary combine because that's more likely uh, to be what happens in my paintings. I'm gonna pick a color. It may or may not, I, I might pick a color that I think looks like a complement to it. They may or may not work perfectly together. And so I'm gonna get some a very interesting uh, neutrals. So this is manganese violet and Nicolazo yellow and by dr dropping them in and letting them flow I can start to see, I'm going to just tilt back and forth, I want them to mix organically rather than me stirring them with my brush and flattening all the little pigment particles. And you can see the kind of reddish brown that's created there. And let's pick another color. Let's pick this marine blue. It's uh, very much like a phthalo turquoise, phthalo blue. And marine blue is made by Old Holland. We're gonna pick an orange. I'm going to choose a transparent orange. This one's made by Schmink, uh, Schminka. Testing my memory at uh, picking those colors without looking at the labels, remembering what's in my palette. Uh, again, we're going to tilt and let them flow. Because the uh, marine blue is a little bit of a uh, greenish blue, it's a cool blue, it's going to mix differently than a warmer blue would, and I'm going to show you that in just a second. Come on, you two. Get along. If you want things to mix, you might need to add a little bit more liquid than you usually do. You want them to have the chance to be able to run together and combine. So I'm gonna just keep tilting that as I paint. Um, let's do a warm, warmer blue this time, cobalt. And again with the transparent orange, let's really see what it does. Back and forth. The challenge here is getting the proportions right so that one color doesn't dominate and it doesn't look over, overly orange. These two did not want to mix. Let's just try stirring them a little bit. Now I've been making just broad stripes of color, but you could do different shapes. Let's try, let's try a green gold. It's kind of a, kind of a petal shape and an opera pink. These two aren't, aren't real close to complementary. Um, it's a yellow green, so it should probably be a more purpley red. But we can see the way they mix, and that's what we want to look for. We're looking for creative neutrals. We're looking for how uh, a near complement or a complement will muddy a p uh, the other, the, the complementary color. Uh, and those things inform our painting. Uh, let's try uh, this Rose of Ultramarine. Let's do another petal shape. I think let's do the Nicola, no, let's do a different yellow. Let's do Mars yellow just for fun. It's an opaque yellow, so it's gonna bring in um, that covering power that it has. And so that's gonna change our 
reactions as well, how the colors react to each other. Let it flow. And this is a really good exercise in kind of meditative painting too, because we're just pausing to watch the paint and see how it mixes. And I'm getting a really interesting brown here, basically. Now, as you look at these neutrals, uh, maybe for you, brown has always just been brown. And I wanna talk about that. As you're playing with your complementary colors and your near complements, I also want you to be thinking about the neutrals that you see uh, in your reference photos, if you're painting landscapes uh, especially, because what I see often is people looking for brown or gray um, when they really should be looking more critically at the colors in their reference photos. When you have a reference photo that is a that has an area on it that is a difficult color to identify, what really helps uh, so that you don't just go straight to brown without understanding what quality of brown. Is it a greenish brown like this over here? Is it an orangey brown over here? Is it this kind of reddish violet brown? There's just so many different qualities that make up brown. And so what I like to do is when I have a reference photo that's difficult to identify, I have this little piece of cardstock and it's just got a tiny hole punched in it. And all I have to do to really help me identify that color is to isolate that color by placing my little dot card right over top of my reference photo in the area of that kind of confusing uh, color quality. And when I get a little closer, um, it really helps me to see uh, just what I'm dealing with and maybe come a little bit closer to mixing the right neutral for it. There's nothing flatter than a boring sepia. I see this especially when people are painting skin tones or water. When you start to get into those neutral areas or those shadowed areas, isolating the color uh, is really helpful for being able to create some really beautiful color qualities that feel lit from within rather than a dull brown that flattens everything playing with your neutrals and starting to see the beauty in those muddy areas where complements combine is a really good way to build your skills and your color sensitivity, your ability to see subtle variations of color in your landscape and in the world around you.